In this video, we will learn how to calculate between grams to moles, moles to grams, molecules to moles, moles to molecules, and uh, even grams to molecules. The key thing here is understanding what a mole is. So this video is all about the mole. You will use the mole from now until the end of your chemistry career. So it is very important that we get this down to ensure a solid foundation moving forward. Um, you may have remembered that we don't abbreviate molecule, M-O-L. And the reason why is that mole, the word mole, is actually abbreviated M-O-L. Um, and that a mole represents 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. One mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. And um, we'll use a mole because it's going to be much easier to count the amount of substance that we have in grams. And we prefer to use grams because we can measure those in lab rather than the number of particles. Um, however, when a reaction proceeds, it's going to be based on the amount of particles you have, not the amount of grams. But we measure grams, and so we need a way to convert between grams and particles. Um, and one mole of substance will be equal to that substance's molar mass. We have covered that in uh, notes 8.1. And like we just talked about, one mole of a substance is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. And one mole of a gas substance, and I'm going to underline gas substance, is going to be equal to 22.4 liters of that substance at STP. And STP stands for Standard Temperature and Pressure. And when we do a whole unit on gases, STP will be important. But for right now, we can sort of ignore STP, even though it is important. And so um, here is a mole map that you'll see in your notes packet. The mole map is what a lot of students like to use as they're starting to do problems like these. However, you will not be given a mole map on any sort of test or quiz. So eventually, you will have to get away from a mole map um, if you do start using one. Okay, so let's, let's dive into some practice problems. And in this video, you're going to need your periodic table and your calculator in order to get some of these numbers calculated. And um, for convenience sake, I am not going to worry about significant figures. Okay, that's not our goal here. So I may do sig figs at some point but not at other points, and that's okay because we're not focused on sig figs. And we're going to do a lot of examples because this is that important. Okay, so how I normally teach this with my chemistry students is that when we read a problem, it's very important that we kind of diagnose it and underline what we're given and circle what it is that we need to find. And so when I read number one, it says how many moles are equal to 1.20 times 10 to the 24th atoms of sulfur. So I'm going to underline what I'm given. I'm given atoms of sulfur. And then I am going to circle what I'm trying to find, and that is moles. So I'm going to start off and I'm going to build a fence. I'm given 1.20 times 10 to the 24th atoms. And... I'm going to be specific. I'm specifically given atoms of uh, the element sulfur. So now I'm going to build a fence and um, I'm going to convert it. And it's good to understand that if I go back and I look at my mole map, moles are in the middle here. And so what that means is I can convert to moles in any uh, from anything in just one step. So I'm going to convert from atoms of sulfur to moles of sulfur. And then one mole of sulfur, or anything, there's going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sulfur. And when I math this out, I get 
moles of sulfur. Okay, we never expect to have a crazy large amount of moles. We will have a crazy large amount of atoms, that's typical, but not of moles. Moles will typically be uh, a number between zero and maybe 10. Okay, sometimes it'll be more, but typically it's a pretty low number. Okay, so let's look at number two. Number two says, how many atoms are equal to 1.5 moles of helium? I am given 1.5 moles of helium and I need to convert it to atoms. And so uh, 1.5 moles of helium, whatever I'm given, will start my fence. And then um, because moles is in the numerator, I need to move moles to my denominator. So moles will cancel and I'm gonna convert moles of helium. And when I'm at moles, I can go anywhere in just one step. And so I'm gonna convert to atoms. In one mole of helium, there will be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of helium. And when I math that out, I get 9.03 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of helium. And um, that's a large number, but that's what we expect when we have atoms. If I compare numbers 1 and 2, if you notice, I never will ever pay attention to if 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is in the bottom or in the denominator or in the numerator. It all depends on how, to, how we need to cross out units. So I'm not worried about if it's in the top or the bottom. Okay, so let's look at number three. Number three says how many moles are equal to 4.15 times 10 to the 23rd molecule so we're of carbon dioxide and that is CO2. We are given 4.15 times 10 to the 23rd molecules and we need to convert that to moles. Well, good thing here is that if I'm at moles, I can convert to moles in any one step. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my fence with what I'm given and I'm given 4.15 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. And I cannot abbreviate molecules MOL because that's technically moles in chemistry. And so, um, I'm going to convert, and this is molecules of CO2, I should be specific. Molecules of CO2 to moles of CO2. And um, in one mole of CO2, there will be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. And I'll plug this into my calculator. 4.15 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And when I do that, I get 0 0.69 moles of CO2. Okay, let's scroll down and I'm going to jump around in the notes packet to some examples that I think build off of each other. So I'm going to scroll to number eight. And in number eight, I am solving for moles of silver fluoride, AGF, and I've been given 41, or excuse me, 42.15 grams of silver fluoride. So I'm going to start my fence with 42.15 grams, and I'm given AGF. And luckily in this problem, I need to just convert to moles. And like we've seen before, converting to moles will be easy to do in one step. And since I have grams of AGF in my numerator, I will need to have grams of AGF in my denominator and then I convert, convert in any one step to moles. And here's something that we have not seen before, and that is that one mole is always going to be equal to the molar mass of whatever compound we have. And so if I look at the periodic table, all I need to do is take silver 107.87, and I need to add that to 19, and when I do that, um, I'm going to get the molar mass, and that molar mass will be 126.87 grams of silver fluoride for every one mole. And when I do that, I get 0 0.33 moles of AGF. And now I can move on to more difficult questions, okay? So these ones that we see next will be more difficult. I'm gonna look at number six, and in number six, I am given 13.5 grams of sulfur dioxide, and I need to solve for molecules. Okay, so I'm gonna start my fence with 100, 
or excuse me, 13.5 grams of SO2. And um, I'm gonna build my fence and I'm gonna go to moles. So notice I'm going from grams to molecules. And if I scroll up to my mole map, grams are gonna be mass, so that's over here. And I need to get to molecules, which would be particles. So the only way to do that is I have to travel through the mole to get there, okay? So generally, a good first step in chemistry, whether it's regular chemistry or AP chemistry, is going to be getting to moles. And so I'm gonna take grams of SO2 and convert it to moles of SO2. And in one mole of SO2, there are 64.06 grams of SO2. And um, now that I'm at moles, I can get to my particles. So in moles of SO2, I'll be able to get to molecules. And again, we cannot abbreviate molecules as moles because we'll get confused if we do that. So in one mole of SO2, there will be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. And when I math that out, 13.5 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 64.06, I will get 1.26, uh, well, that actually rounds to 1.27 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of SO2. Okay. So let's look at number seven. And in number seven, we are given atoms of sulfur, but we need to convert it to mass, and mass will be in grams. So notice I'm not given moles, so I'm gonna have to travel through the mole to get there. And so I'm gonna take 2.23 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of just sulfur. And um, I'm gonna first convert it to moles. So there'll be some amount of atoms of S in moles of sulfur, and that conversion is actually one mole of sulfur is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sulfur. If I stop now, I'm just at moles, but the question asked me to solve for mass, so I need to solve for grams. And so I'm gonna take moles of sulfur and convert it to just grams of sulfur and this will just be using the molar mass. In one mole of sulfur, there is 32.06 grams of sulfur, and that will solve out to be 11.88 grams of sulfur. And if I go through, I can actually just double check that things do cancel. I have atoms of sulfur that cancel, moles of sulfur, and um, I am left with grams of sulfur, which is what my units are. Okay, let's look at number 11. And in number 11, in this one, we are given 189 grams of carbon tetrabromide, and we wanna know how many molecules there are. So again, I'm not given moles, but I'm gonna have to travel through moles, and so I'm gonna have 189 grams of CBr4. And I'm gonna first get that to moles. That's always a good first step in chemistry. And so uh, the grams of CBr4, I'm gonna convert that to moles of CBr4. In one mole of something, it'll just be its molar mass to get the grams. And so that'll be 331.61 grams of CBr4. And then I'll convert from moles of CBr4 to molecules of CBr4, and in one mole of CBr4, that will be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and when I math that out, I get 3.43 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of CBr4. Okay, let's just do a couple more. Um, I want to look at number four. 14 and 15 because and those will be our last ones because those ones have liters in STP. So um, in number 14, we are at STP and that is important to kind of make note of. 
we need to solve for liters and we're given 5.90 molecules of fluorine and remember fluorine is technically F2 because it's a diatomic element and so I'm given 5.90 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of F2 and I need to convert that to just liters and this is at STP so there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of F2 and one mole of F2. And then um, we can convert moles of fluorine. If I scroll back up to our mole map, if I'm at moles, I can get to volume, which will be liters uh, in one step using 22.4 liters. And in one mole of F2, there will be 22.4 liters at STP. And so if I uh, solve this out, the math tells me I'm going to get 21.95 liters of F2 at STP. And um, let's do another example. This one, we are given 78 0.4 liters we are at STP so we can use 22.4 and we need to solve for grams so 78.4 liters of CO2 is what we're given and um, with that we can say that there's 22.4 liters of CO2 in one mole of CO2 and then in one mole of CO2 there are 44.01 grams of CO2. And when I solve that out, I actually get 154.04 grams of CO2. Okay, there's other practice problems here that you can work on and check the key online. But the, these types of problems are going to be very important. They're never going to go away for the rest of the semester and if you continue on in chemistry.